It was bloody. Many miles away. Brutal, and perhaps the most important decade in human history. Through the smoke of agony and blood-tainted soil arose good. The irony is on our quest for destruction, creation proved necessary. We split an atom, we learned how to use missiles, and of course, the birth of computers. Shortly after the war, sometime in the late 1940s into the 50s, Claude Shannon and Alan Turning would begin works on the first chess engines. Some of you may be familiar with Shannon's number, yes, this Shannon, which is a rough estimate of how many chess positions are possible, which he estimated to be more than the atom in the observable universe. In 1949, Shannon published an iconic paper titled Programming a Computer for Play in Chess, in which he described an algorithm for the chess playing machine. At the same time, Turning was developing his own chess playing program he worked on called TurboChamp. This started back in 1948 and finished in 1950. Wait, 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 let me not get too ahead of myself. You see, there was one chess engine dating all the way back to 1770, the Turk. In 1770, Kipling exhibited the Turk, the first chess playing automaton in history. Its complicated design featured many compartments with different mechanisms. It incorporated a life-sized model of a human dressed in traditional oriental clothes. Turk was capable of playing chess on its own and beating human opponents. It was even able to recognize illegal moves and force its opponents to take them back. It even solved the difficult knot to wear around the board puzzle. There was just one problem. It was all fake. The Turk was not the one making all the moves. A human inside it was. And it worked. Kimplin toured Europe exhibiting his invention until 1804, which he died. The machine changed several owners and continued playing chess all the way till 1854 when a fire in Philadelphia sealed its fate. It's amazing no one realized the fraud during Turk's lifetime. There would be no more chess engines for roughly 200 years until we reached our protagonist of this story, Shannon and Turning. As mentioned earlier, Shannon and Turning were in the works of the first true chess engines in the early 1950s. The first one only being capable to calculate mate and two, which is more than I can do half the time. Though the two continued to pioneer the field, it wasn't until 1957 IBM engineer Alex Bernstein created the first automated program fully capable of playing a complete chess match. The era of computer chess had officially began. In the 1960s and 70s, algorithms for the computer chess engines were significantly improved. The foundation was set by John Vaughn Newman, who developed the Minimax algorithm, perfectly suited for the game of chess. In 1967, Mac Hack 6 became the first computer chess engine to beat a human opponent. Its playing shrift was around 1300 ELO. But already in 1976, a significant leap happened. Chess Computer Engine Chess 4.5 won the Class B section of the Paul Manson Tournament in Northern California. In 1977, it also won Minnesota Opening with a performance rating of 2271 and beat a Class A player, Stenberg, who was rated 1969 at that time. Even with all these advancements though, chess engines could beat somewhat competent players, but they still stood no chance against the elite of the elite players of chess at the time. In fact, in 1968, international master David Levy bet $3,000, which was probably like, I don't know, a shit ton of money back then though, right? He would be able to beat any chess computer engine in the next 10 years. In 1977, he put his money where his mouth was. He won his bet in a match against chess computer engine KAISSA. But then, the 1980s arrived. By the start of the 1980s, computer chess engine programming had become a lucrative business, which is surprising to me and it really shocked me when I was first reading about this. Personal computers had become widespread in households at this time. The interest in customized and specialized software, including computer chess engines, exploded. In 1982 alone, computer chess companies topped $100 million in sales. In 1980, their programming became a serious competition, and with competition forces progress. In fact, Edward Fredkin, professor of computer science at Karajin Mellon University, introduced the Fredkin Prize. He offered monetary prizes for various achievements in the world of computer chess programming. $5,000 for the first engine to reach master level, 
10,000 for the first engine to reach Grandmaster level, and 100,000 for the first engine to beat the world champion. Then came along an engine called Deep Thought, the first chess computer engine who reached Grandmaster level. In 1988, it shared the first place with Grandmaster Tony Malls in the US Open Championship. In 1989, it easily beat international master David Levy for four games to zero. The downfall of humanity seemed inevitable. In the search for its champion, it turned to the reigning world champion and arguably the greatest player of all time, Gary Kasparov. I might be mispronouncing his name, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. First, in an iconic simultaneous expedition in Hamburg in 1985, he played against 32 of the strongest chess engines and beat them all at the same time. Then in 1989, he faced Deep Thought in a two-game match, which he also won. The 1980s would soon prove to be the last decade humans reigned supreme over computers and chess, though. The name of the project was Deep Blue. In 1996, only seven years after the Kasparov Deep Thought match, round two of Man vs. Machine was held, the first Kasparov Deep Blue match. In the very first game, Deep Blue shocked Kasparov and became the first computer chess engine to beat a world champion in a classical game, which was a huge achievement at this time. Long way from a guy in a robot suit, you know? However, Gary composed himself and won the match with the results 4-2, prolonging the inevitable once again. He had bought humans just a little bit more time. For the next decade or so, humans and computers were roughly even, exchanging matches both ways for some time. On the 5th of December 2017, a group of scientists from Google AI company DeepMind shattered the chess world. In a paper titled, Mastering Chess and Shogi by Self-Play with a General Reinforcement Learning Algorithm, they described the development of a new chess engine, Alpha Zero. Instead of alpha beta searching and linear approximation function for position evaluation used by traditional engines, Alpha Zero uses nonlinear approximation function based on a deep neural network. La da la da ba 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 yada 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 yada. Basically, what it's saying is this engine teaches itself chess, which obviously AI don't have a brain, they can't actually learn stuff. But you know, it does through repetition, it learns and learns and learns and learns, which was revolutionary. Today, this is normal. Today, this is stockfish. Stockfish has consistently ranked first or near the top of most chess engines rating list. And as of February 2023, it is the strongest CPU chess engine in the world. Its estimated ELO rating is over 3,500, way higher than any human. It has won the top chess engine championship 13 times and the chess.com computer chess championship 19 times. Humans will never again see the day where we can beat a computer in a game of chess. But that's okay, it has sparked a whole generation of people who have grew up with engines and it has pushed the game of chess further and further and further. Kasparov, however, hated the idea of automated chess and it becoming just a numbers game. From one of the best chess players ever to despising what chess was turning into. What do you think about chess engines? Did you learn anything? Feel free to leave a like and a subscribe or even a comment if you did. Rub my taint smoothly and gently tonight I plead. Rub my taint tonight smoothly and gently, I plead.